taking a cue from the MCU, Insomniac's Spider-Man game ends with not one, but two post credit scenes that have us eagerly waiting a follow-up. But what do these scenes actually mean for the future of Insomniac's version of the Marvel Universe? Before we get to the scenes and what they could mean for the future, let's start by taking a look at the context surrounding them and how they're set up. Earlier in the game, Mary Jane breaks into Norman Osborn's penthouse to try to find the location of the secret lab where the Devil's Breath antidote is being developed. If he's hiding something up here, I'm gonna find it. While searching for the code that will open the door to a hidden room where she hopes to find said location, MJ heads to Harry's room where she discovers that there's more to Harry's supposed trip to Europe than he let on. Turns out, Harry is sick, and we learn this through his journal entries in a section addressed to Peter and MJ that his doctors believe he's suffering from the same neurodegeneration that took his mother's life. He admits that the Euro trip was a lie and that he's really subjecting himself to an experimental treatment, Devil's Breath. This explains why Norman Osborn risked everything to develop Devil's Breath in the first place. First, to save his wife, and now to potentially save his son from suffering the same fate. After MJ uses the code to enter the hidden room and discovers the location of the secret Devil's Breath lab, I knew it, Tentham Cathedral, Oscorp's records department. She accidentally knocks over a container housing a genetically modified spider that just so happens to hitch a ride with her back to feast. The spider then finds its way to the young Miles Morales. No. Ah, ah. The spider bites him, Miles kills it, and that brings us to our first post credit scene. After developing a relationship over the course of the game, Miles feels comfortable confiding in Peter that he has developed spider powers. It's pretty weird, right? It's at this moment that Peter also reveals to Miles that he's Spider-Man. Not that weird. While in the comics, Miles only becomes Spider-Man after Peter's death at the hands of the Green Goblin. But Insomniac's continuity sees both Spider-Man coexist in the same universe. It's not like Peter and Miles haven't teamed up in the past, but it's always involved some form of universe hopping. Don't freak out. Huh? My name is Miles Morales, and I'm Spider-Man. This continuity sets up a mentor-mentee relationship between Peter and Miles in a way that we've never really seen before and that has us excited. What remains to be seen is whether Miles' powers are exactly like Peter's, or as in the comics, he has additional abilities like invisibility and venom blasts. In the second post credit scene, we see Norman enter the hidden room in his penthouse and visit Harry, who's undergoing the previously mentioned treatment. While Harry mentions in his letter that the treatment has to do with Devil's Breath, he appears to be suspended in a green liquid as opposed to red. Immediately, the color calls to mind the fact that Norman has yet to transition into the Green Goblin. And given the subtle hints throughout the game, including prototype bombs and a mask that features a glider tech sync, we wouldn't be surprised if we saw that change happen in the sequel. As for Harry, the final shot of a black web stretching towards Norman is extremely reminiscent of the Venom symbiote. While the Venom symbiote in the main Marvel continuity belongs to an alien race known as the Clintar, the Ultimate Universe changed the backstory quite a bit. In the Ultimate continuity, the Venom suit was designed by Peter's father, Richard Parker, and Eddie Brock Sr. as a potential cure for cancer. So the Venom symbiote being created and used as a potential cure for a disease as opposed to an alien being is something we've seen before. But what about Harry Osborn as Venom? Well, turns out, in the Ultimate Spider-Man television series, the Venom symbiote is created by none other than Dr. Otto Octavius and Norman Osborn, using Spider-Man's DNA. In this version, Harry does in fact bond with the symbiote to become Venom. It seems like an unlikely source, but the Ultimate Spider-Man television show seems like the closest parallel for what will become Insomniac's version of Venom. So, what do you think? Will we see Miles and Peter team up as the Spider-Man in Insomniac's sequel? Will Norman Osborn finally become the Green Goblin? And will Harry Osborn be this universe's version of Venom? Let us know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays. I'll break your soul into pieces. <laughs>